Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chris, part-time reseller on eBay. It's time to hit those charity shops again. Going to a couple of charity shops today that I haven't been to in a long time, hoping to find some good stuff, some bargains to resell on eBay, and maybe some stuff for myself as well. Now, a little anecdote time. You've ever been to a charity shop before? Let's say the first time you go to it, you have a real success. You find loads of cool stuff at great prices, some juicy profits sell on eBay. And every time you go back, you kind of have that same thought in your mind. You're thinking, is it going to be as good as it was that one time? Am I going to find as much stuff as I did that time? And you never do. But in the back of your mind, you're thinking, it could be that good again, even though it hasn't been. So this charity shop in particular, I had a killer haul, man, a couple of years ago now. And every time I've been back, I've hoped to sort of replicate that haul, and it's never happened. In fact, the last couple of times I've been there, it's been pretty rubbish. So I'm hoping today can be a little bit better. Um, in fact, the last time I went there, I didn't buy anything at all. And the time before that, I bought something and it turned out to be like broken beyond repair. So there we go. Hopefully today we can have a bit, bit more luck, but um, we will see, we will see. So a couple of towns, four charity shops in total. Let's see what they got. Now we are in November now, which means tis the season which means every charity shop I go to, I am battling Mariah Carey and Shaking Stevens. So once again, you'll have to deal with my uh, my voiceover. Check out these. Tiny little pair of North Face uh, insulated, kind of like snow boots, that are really small size and uh, yeah, pretty dirty. I can't actually remember what size they were. Um, I think like a kid's 12. So, you know, obviously adults go to them like I don't know three upwards this was like the 12 below that so really small size not the best condition either to be honest um and as we'll find out in a moment probably no profit there they were a fiver i don't know if i'm going to show you or not but the put you out your misery they were five pounds so left those potential but um nah i'll leave them this caught my eye too so this is a well what i think is a uh, vtech toot toot driver but it just had a bit more to it had a bit more going to it and uh as we're about to find out i uh <laughs> made the mistake of turning it on and oh my gosh it does not shut up one pound fifty i actually do pick that up just on a, on a bit of a whim no signal in this charity shop at all so i'm literally just going by sort of what i know this was cool this was an older corgi uh, honda prelude car but it's missing its tow hook uh quite a lot of paint loss if that was in really good condition, that would be worth a pick-up. Not worth a huge amount, but if it was like a pound, it would be worth picking up. But uh, not in that condition, unfortunately. So yeah, all things considered, this uh, toy section wasn't actually too bad. This is... Oh, what's he called? Alex. This is Alex the Lion of Madagascar. Again, a pound fifty. Um, was in two minds to pick this up, uh, but sort of out of the shop, down the road did some comps and uh, yeah I'm glad I didn't only worth about five plus postage so now these caught my eye too um, little pair of new balance trainers um, I think these are the classic something I'll show you on the on the tongue in a minute the classic 274 574 there we go um, again great condition not like really really good condition the thing is I've got a couple of pairs of these or at least similar models listed on eBay currently Similar size, I think they're a UK size 4, it's a pretty small size. No interest whatsoever, like literally nothing at all. So that was playing in my mind. So good condition, cool shoe, but nah, I left them. Okay, on to some clothing. Now, this brand used to sell okay for me. Uh, Sunderland of Scotland. This is, I believe, a women's uh, golfing vest. But the dolphin jackets and some of the other sort of jackets they do, they've just stopped selling at all really for me. So I would only pick this up, this brand even, if it was like a, an exceptional piece. This wasn't, so I, uh, I left it behind. Another brand that doesn't do as well as perhaps it should is Geox Respira. Now, in the past, I picked up a couple of pairs of these. Uh, I believe are ladies, like ladies boots. They had these for £10. Um, and they did all right, but more recent pairs haven't done so well. I think for a fiver, I'd give them a go because they were in nice condition, they were a good size. But for a tenner, I don't think you can squeeze more, much more than 25 out of them. Um, so good for, for yourself, but not for reselling. 
better. Right. This needs talking about. This needs discussing. This is a vintage uh, Street Sharks hand puppet from the early mid 1990s, I think 94, going from eBay comps. Talking of eBay comps, check these out. Right. Now, as you can see, in the shop for £17.50, in the glass case, I completely dismissed it. Like, completely dismissed it. Didn't think it was worth picking up at all. I didn't even research it. Now, if you take away just one thing from this video, if you see something out there and about that's cool, bit different, just piques your interest, just look it up. Because don't be like me on a Saturday night, three days after I've been out, researching the sort of the eBay comps for this video, typed in this, this Street Shark thing to a sort of company, this clip, and then being horrified at the uh, the solds. <laughs> Absolutely horrified. I then had to wait until today, which is Monday, um, to sort of return. I actually went out of my way to return to the shop, hoping, praying that it was still there, because this was not something that I was gonna pass up if it was still there um but oh my goodness just what a complete clock why why i didn't look it up i don't know i think it's because it's in that glass case you know it's sort of the sort of the unobtainium stuff just seems to be you know has other sort of reputation in the glass case but my goodness i yeah my stomach just sank when uh, I saw the eBay comps, and we've all been there, we've all sort of found something, haven't really investigated it, passed it, and then down the line, we've sort of worked out how much it's worth, and then just been horrified at uh, what, we, what we've passed up. So, if you're like me, and you're in the situation, as I said, just research it. If you haven't got a signal, just go out of the shop, just try and find some signal, because stuff like this should not be passed up. <sighs> and now I've got that out of my system. Uh, let's just gaze at it some more. And then look at why well, I actually did buy that Toot Toot Driver Speedboat. Nice. Of course, I left you hanging a little bit there. I didn't tell you how the story ended. Well, I can now reveal how the story ended. <sighs> I do not know how it was still there. I went back four days later and I cannot tell you the FOMO I was experiencing all weekend thinking is it still there is it still there is it still there got there before they opened waited outside like a sado walked in in the glass case still there yeah I'm still I'm still in shock really um and do you know what the best thing was when I bought it or when I asked about it to get out of the, out of the glass cabinet the, the chat said, said um, oh um, I'm glad it's going to a good home um they're going for loads online, but we want to list it for a fair price. I'm like, yes! Yes, charity shop! They got it right! Because if that was priced up at, say, 60, 80 quid, it would have never have sold. But £17.50 gives a good amount of money to the charity and leaves a nice bit of profit for me to make as well. So, fantastic. So, I don't know much about Street Sharks, but I believe this guy is called Streaks, which is obviously represented by these like street marks. Again, it's from 1994, uh, Streetwise Design. There we go. So, like I said, it needs a bit of a clean. Um, hopefully I can clean them up without causing too much damage, or any damage, to be honest. And, um, yeah, listed up 80 or so quid, but sudden shock. But that's not all. That is not all, because there are two trash shops in this town, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to have a look around both of them, because you just don't know what they're going to be. You just don't know what's going to be there. So, this isn't something I typically pick up. I got a Monopoly, but look, it's in a wooden box from 2003. It's basically like a sort of classic edition, so it's meant to be like a reminiscent of an older board. It's the full game, um, but I'm sure a normal Monopoly has eight playing pieces, I think. This one's only got six um, smaller um, money pieces, but so it's all in there. It's all in lovely condition. That was £4.50. Hopefully I can get about 25 quid plus postage for that one. That's coming up to Christmas and this is um, all sought after. If it doesn't sell before Christmas, I'll probably just keep it. Because we haven't got a Monopoly in the household, so it'd be worth having. But yeah, for, hopefully I can get that sold before the big day. And also, again, always check the I always check the ties, but I never find anything worthwhile. But 
by some miracle, this time I did. This is a Christian Dior Monsieur uh, silk tie. It's got a sort of ghost paisley de design. I don't know how art's going to pick it up. That sort of yeah, paisley pattern behind the uh, the dots and lines. That was £3.50. That was kind of the price of all the ties in there. They were either £3 or £3.50, regardless if they were M&S or any other sort of tie manufacturer. So, yeah, really happy with that. Don't know how long it's going to take to sell, but I would have hoped for 30 quid, maybe? Maybe a little bit ambitious, but say from 3.50, my money's definitely safe. And the last thing I got, and this is something that I've kind of been after for a while, because, okay, just put it put it this way, Ben Sherman is a terrible brand to resell. It's up there with Ted Baker as being a real stinker. For whatever reason, there's no demand for it. However, there is one category of Ted Baker... There's one category of Ben Sherman, two names there, that you should be looking out for, and that is Beatles shirts. Check it out. So there we go, you've got Ringo, Paul, John, and George. <laughs> there we go. Um, repeat printed all over. Um, I'm not a big Beatles fan, so I don't know which sort of album this corresponds with. I think it's a later one, going by the fact that they've got moustaches. They're not sort of fresh-faced and uh, straight out of Liverpool. So, yeah, as like I said, Ben Sherman. Uh, the only sort of visible Ben Sherman branding is at the bottom here. But it's a 3XL. Only uh, short-sleeved, not the end of the world, even though we are in winter. But I paid £6.50 for that. Where's your tag? So I've, I've hooked it behind this uh, palm thing. There you go, £6.50. Hopefully, 40 quid. Something like that. I'm hoping with the release of the latest, or well, the last Beatles single, should hopefully, yeah, lead to a slightly higher price and hopefully a, a fairly quick sale. But, say, the only Ben Sherman thing I'd recommend picking up, these Beatles shirts, and I've never seen one before. So that was a that was a really welcome surprise in that shop. So that was that. Slight interlude. Like I said, the, <laughs> I... Sorry? Ah, God damn it! Okay, do you want a plunger? <laughs> I might leave that in, I'm not sure. But anyway, so, slight interlude, but honestly, I did not think this was going to go that well. I've learned a lesson, I've learned a valuable lesson, but I haven't missed out. So, like I said, this has not happened before. Normally when I've gone back for something, it's long gone. So, like I said, if you see something cool in the charity shop, just look it up. Just do whatever you can to try and just work out if it's worth buying or it's worth leaving. Because you don't want to go home then find out it's awesome and then be worrying that it isn't there and then return and it isn't there. So, if that makes sense. Anyway, back to the footage. Oh, these could have been so good. These are a pair of Oliver Sweeney. Um, I believe these are called the Bologna. Bologna. Um, kind of like a... Not a brogue, more like an Oxford shoe. Anyway, two pairs, both size eight and a half. But what I don't show you that well is the, oh, the wear to the heel is crazy. Proper cliff edge stuff. Such a shame because otherwise they were in pretty, pretty good condition. Never mind. Now, this caught my eye hanging on the end of the rail. Check it out, De Seagual. Really cool brand um, that holds quite a bit of value in certain things. I'll put you out your misery. This shirt was not one of them. And to be honest, I was quite tempted by it at £6. Even though it's only a size small, I thought that pattern would carry it through. But then I saw the wash tag. It's absolutely decked. Look at that. Buttons are still there. But yeah, the wash tag was absolutely mashed. Um, it is only cotton, and my luck with cotton shirts isn't good at all. So for £6, I thought I'd look it up. I thought I'd go away and look it up, and I'm glad I did, because the sell-through rate is absolutely appalling. No idea why. Oh, check this out. Basic pair of boots. Only a UK size 5. Don't think they're worth it. Just a bit plain. Only 3 quid. But, nah. But, here, interestingly, got a pair of fit flops. What on earth? Fairly good condition. And, uh, whoops. They're only 3 quid as well. They might be alright. Only a UK size 3. 
But for three quid, I think I'm going to give them a go. Can't go wrong. Oh my god, just, just see this. Oof. The vintage umbro is seven pounds. Double XL. Look at that thing. Like a manager's jacket. Hmm. Possibly. That could be worth it. Three quid. Maybe. Yes. Give that a go. Now, I'll be honest, I have no idea how well this thing's going to do. It's a vintage, I mean, yeah, 1996 vintage uh, m and St. Michael. A full, a pure new wool bomber jacket. Lovely sort of forest green colour. Uh, size large, I believe. There you go, classic. Gold St. Michael uh, label there. But yeah, really, really good quality um, wool jacket. So it was a fiver. I don't know if I'm going to show you the, uh, the price tag, but um, yeah, hopefully 25, 30 on that one. But for now, I'm going to wear it myself. Now, this isn't the sort of normal thing I'll pick up, but when I see a leather jacket, proper leather jacket, for a good price and in good condition, I'll snap it up because the demand for these, regardless of the brand, regardless of the style, really, to a degree, um, is pretty good. This is by yeah, LSB Trading Co. There's only a fiver. Five quid for a leather jacket. Can't go wrong. Now, just ignore what I'm picking up here a moment and, st and focus on those brown shoes I've got in my hand. I didn't even show you, but here's what they just sold for. 70 quid for a small pair of Russell and Bromley brogues. That's the real star of the show. Uh, what I've got in my other hand are a pair of suede Dr. Martin boots. I can't remember what they're called, um, but they were 15 quid and see there's like a hole in the sort of the uh, calf area sort of ankle area even yeah there's going to be a lace through there so they're not complete and there's so much ground in dirt and i am back hopefully in frame um so you would have seen some stuff in the charity shops on the footage but i actually the last charity shop i forgot to film in i just thought i pressed the button and turns out i was doing a time lapse rather than a video so ah uh, muppet absolute muppet but i did get oh my god i can't even uh, got a massive bag of stuff very kindly threw in this uh, this bag as well so i'll show you what i got all of this in here this big bag came to 25 pounds i know the guy there he knows what i do in fact he's probably the only charity shop person that knows i resell and appreciates it because he knows like you know i'm gonna buy stuff and give me money whenever i come in so no particular order. First of all, I've got this vintage, and it is vintage, carry more, I know, bag. This is the Panther SA back 65 litre um, hiking rucksack. I know carry more isn't the best brand, but these sort of older rucksacks can do quite well. Obviously, big size, 65 litres. It's got this sort of um, adjustable back system and the metal, so the aluminium poles, so nice rigid structure. All the sort of buckles are there, all the zips work. Um, yeah, that was basically a fiver. It was a bit dirty, but I can clean that up, no problem. Um, 30 quid or so on that one, I think. I say I haven't sold carry more bags before, at least nothing of this size. Given it's older, given it is in pretty good condition, I'm gonna say 30, maybe 25 to 30, something like that. But um, there is a demand for those, so hopefully it doesn't take too long to sell. Uh, next up, ah, <laughs> got a wetsuit, but O'Neill wetsuit. Now I have checked it for holes. I can't see any. I think we're okay. Um, but this was a fiver as well. Someone's just pulled it next to me. Hopefully they don't think I'm stupid or crazy, but I am. Um, I don't think it's an adult size one. I think it's a youth size. Uh, but the one I sold previously, I think I sold for £45. I think this was a fiver, so even if I only get sort of 25 30 because it's a smaller size, that's fine. So it's got the uh, the zip strap there, hook and loop stuff all good, Embro um, embroidery, the printed logo is good, um, and it is a, a full length one. So yeah, again, experimenting in wetsuits. Last one did okay. Hopefully this one can do, well, yeah, nearly as good as that one, but we'll see. 
stuff that down there. Uh, sticking with the water sport theme. Saw this brand before. This is a palm. Am I going to show you? Come on, sleeve. Sleeve. Sleeve ain't work. Come on, sleeve. There we go. Palm. There we go. <laughs> calm. Palm. This is a palm. Uh, quarter. Quarter Velcro. That's a new one to me. Quarter Velcro. Um, sort of pullover kayaking or canoeing uh, top. Size small, so not the best size. Did they name these? I forgot if Palm actually names this. There we go. Uh, the center jacket. Uh, again, that was a fiver. Should hopefully be about 20 quid on that one. I say it's not a like a all over neoprene thing. It's a pretty basic jacket as they come, but it is waterproof. So yeah, youth size, adult size small. Should be yeah 20 25 something like that so i'll put comps in here if i'm miles off then i apologize um this one this is actually he threw in for free because it needs a good clean so it is a it's not obvious it it's a baby carrier it's a baby carrier um it's by a brand called ergo baby let me see it's pretty it needs a really good clean ergo baby but ergo baby is a pretty good um baby accessory brand so i haven't checked it completely it's like i said it needs a really good clean but ergo baby stuff i'll put a screenshot in here can do really well so this is called the four position 360 boj black and camel okay now that, that color is called camel cool um yeah free so i've got to put the put the, uh, the work in I'm sure these can do sort of 40 quid. Maybe maybe I'm miles off. Again, I put a screenshot in here. But that that could be a really good, uh, really good find. We've actually got one of these for my son. I don't think it's this model, but we've got an Ergo baby. And I'm sure my wife paid ah, 50 quid on marketplace, and I'm sure that was a going rate. So I'm hoping that's a bit of a winner. But again, it will need a bit of bit, a bit of TLC. Bring it back to good health. And hopefully that'll be a nice bit of profit. Um three more things now i'm aware of this brand i've never bought it before but these were in such good condition i had to give them a go so these are a pair of am i going to mispronounce these bally's ballies bally sure it's bally um just sort of um like court shoes leather court shoes uk size six so a nice woman's size sort of um like a navy blue leather now as you can see, the heels are fine apart from there's like a bit of like a, a chip out of that. I don't even know how that happens. That one's fine. That one's got a bit of a sort of chip out of it. But so there's there's barely any wear at all. So yeah, really odd. I don't know how that happens, but I don't think it's gonna affect the value too much. Um made in England, which is a nice little touch. I don't know, but they were £2.50. So from £2.50, nothing to lose there. Might take a while to sell because this sort of shoe can sit around a little bit, but I'm gonna say maybe 20 on those might be way off, might be way off the mark. But I'm gonna guess 20 and then we'll just we'll just see. But I know Bally, however you pronounce it, is um is a good brand to look out for given the condition is good, if the condition is good, sorry. So I'm hoping fingers crossed for that one. Uh, but this these should bring it up anyway. So these, these are the first thing I picked up a pair of old Asics. Um, Gave them a good look over. There's a bit of wear to the soles, but not too much. Um, given they're, they're a bit older. Now, with Asics, similar to Nikes, Nikes and Adidas, you can actually tell the the, uh, the year. So, if I spin you around. Right, so this is going to work. So, there's the label. You see, that, see that bottom number with the F? F37? So, the F370... Oh, sorry, F370904. So I believe, I believe that means it's September 2004? Now that can't be right. They're not that old. Maybe they are. Maybe they are from 2004. Wow. Okay. Almost vintage. <laughs> Almost vintage. Bizarre. So there we go. Um, let's say nowhere to the heels, which is fantastic. Um, good size. They're a UK... 
Nine and a half. So, EK8 and a half. So, I well, I thought they're a men's shoe, that's fine. Um, they are the, what do you call these? The Gel 1100s. So, just a just a running shoe. So, I don't know, again, maybe 20 quid on those? Again, they're 2 50 so. No complaints. And finally, again, remember that lad, the uh, the shop that had the suede Doc Martin boots? But they're, they're missing the, um, the cord that the... Um, not lace, it was a, I don't know what, what it was, but anyway, missing the sort of strap thing, and they were like dirt, like in-ground dirt, they were 15 quid, so I left them behind, but in this shop, they had these, now, you can tell these are modern dot margin because the material's a bit poo, um, these are made in China, so they're not even made in Thailand, they're like the, the, the lowest quality dot martins, but they are a lovely big size, size 12, I haven't tried them on myself, that could be, um, <laughs> that could be uh, the fate of them if I try them on, they fit. But they're a, yeah, they're a lovely sort of. They're not suede. They're almost like um, like a canvas, synthetic upper. You know, they got the little uh, little logo there that um, symbolises the materials. Leather upper and then like rubber outsole. So I mean, yeah, really flimsy material. But they are um, they are Doc Martens. They've got the sort of uh, oil resistant. Um, or, or resistant. What's that called? What Dot Martens Plus? Dot Martens Plus. Are they airwear? I don't know if they. Even, yeah, I think they are. Yeah, bouncy soles. What do they call them? Bouncing soles. That's it. Bouncy soles. I know, I know myself. I promise. And these are called the Dr. Martens Mayport. Is that going to pick it up? Hopefully, these are the, the Mayport ankle boots. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, airwear. Of course they are. Yeah. Do you know what? Last year, one of my uh, bucket lists, like a reselling bucket list thing, was to find, buy, I guess, and sell a pair of Doc Martens. Up to this year, so at the end of last year, I hadn't bought a single pair of Doc Martens. This year, I think I bought six or seven. But yeah, I also found loads. So it's like the year of the Doc Martens. Um, but they are, like I said, I might keep them. But I don't know. They are, they are in good enough condition to sell. And usually what I buy, what I keep shoes myself, there's like a floor that I'm happy to wear myself, but that wouldn't be as good if I sold them. But I don't know. I think they just need a good, well, a clean over, wipe down, and they should be good to go. I think I'll sell them. I could do with the money right now, so. Yeah, I don't know. I may resist trying them on, just in case. So that's that. So, yeah, cool. I'd say um, this shop is a bit of a, it's a bit of a, it's an Aladdin's cave, but you've got to really like dig through stuff. Could have spent ages there, but I was running out of time. So um, it, it was like a sort of 15 minute sort of whistle stop tour. Anyway, I've waffled on too long. Time to let you go. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I am trying to get out sourcing more. Given my work patterns these days, I do have the potential to go out sourcing more, which is quite nice. Obviously my lunch break, I'm not taking the mickey. Um, so yeah, hopefully there'll be more regular sourcing videos coming out. Um, into the future as well as like sales videos and like top tips that sort of thing so yeah if you haven't subscribed already please do because it really helps the channel out really trying to push for a thousand subs early part of next year hopefully so if you like what so if you'd like to subscribe and you haven't already please do it's free and um yeah it just lets you know when i've released a new video usually about once a week but occasionally a bit longer if i've got lots on um in my life but anyway i'll leave you there Thank you so much for watching. Take care. And until next time, I'll see you then. Goodbye.